So Judeo-Italian is a bit of a tricky subject to talk about because the term Judeo-Italian is not so easy to define. It's really an umbrella term that can refer to a lot of different things. Um, I would divide Judeo-Italian into two broad categories. First, there are Italian texts written in Hebrew characters, which come from as early as about the 11th century until the 18th or 19th century. And I'll say more about these in a few minutes. And second, there's a whole variety of spoken Jewish dialects in Italy, uh, which vary by location. So there's a Jewish dialect of Rome, uh, a dialect of Florence, of Venice, Mantua, Ferrara, Livorno, and several other places. And um, those dialects come from all over um, Italy, from Turin in the, in the Northwest, Venice, Milan, Reggio Emilia, uh, Ferrara, Rome, so all over the um, Italian peninsula. And these spoken dialects, which are attested only from the 19th and uh, 20th centuries, are um, in each case different, sometimes very different, from the spoken dialects of the local non-Jewish populations. So, for example, the dialect spoken by the Jews in Rome um, is not the same as the uh, local Roman dialect, and both are different from standard uh, Italian. And these spoken Jewish dialects, which are almost all extinct, or nearly so, um, were rarely written down, but when they were written down, they were written in the Italian alphabet, not the Hebrew alphabet. There are only uh, a small number of published texts in the spoken dialects, um, all uh, either poems or plays, and uh, uh, some descriptions also by, uh, by linguists. The corpus of Italian texts in Hebrew characters is far larger, but that also is not um, homogenous. That is to say, there are a, a variety of different types of Italian written in Hebrew characters. And again, all that together we can call Judeo-Italian. Uh, the first sort of category of texts in Hebrew characters are uh, in a language I would call standard Italian or at least nearly uh, standard Italian. Um, that is a bunch of texts in Judeo-Italian uh, are Jewish only in the use of the Hebrew alphabet. For example, there was a complete Bible translation um, written in the 16th century. Um, and the language of this translation is essentially just Italian, same as the Italian uh, that non-Jews were using in the 16th century. Um, this manuscript is in three parts. Two of the three parts are in Oxford. One is in JTS in New York. And if I read this aloud, um, it would just sound like normal Italian. But you see here, um, the second word, if you read Hebrew, is lomo. I've transcribed it here at the, at the very bottom of the slide. Um, you can even see that they used an apostrophe, L apostrophe, Laman apostrophe, um, in imitation of uh, Italian uh, orthography. And there are a bunch of texts like this, um, including uh, other translations from Hebrew, uh, letters, sermons, various kinds of glossaries and dictionaries, um, and some original texts written in uh, this kind of Judeo-Italian. Here is... Oh, my, there we go. Um, here is a... Um, portion of a uh, Judeo-Italian song for Hanukkah. And uh, this one, again, is just normal Italian written in Hebrew characters, except in this case, there are a bunch of Hebrew words mixed in. So it begins, Diamo Gloria, two Italian words, Shel Hanukkah, Oras Diamo Con Simcha. So uh, here uh, we get the Hebrew alphabet, but also some Hebrew words mixed in to the Italian text. This uh, text um, you see in two different versions. On the left of the slide, you see a uh, all Hebrew letter version that was actually published, printed in Mantua in 1619. It's a very well-known song um, that was sung for Purim. It's at the bottom of the slide is the link. You can go back and listen to that um, recording if you'd like. 
And on the right of the slide, you see the same exact um, uh, verse of this poem, but the Italian in this case was written in the Italian alphabet and only the Hebrew words were written in the Hebrew alphabet. Here you see a trilingual, a page of a trilingual dictionary. It's a Hebrew dictionary with glosses in Judeo-Italian and Judeo-Arabic, published in 1488 in Naples. And I've blown up a couple of entries here. On the left, you see the word lavan in Hebrew, the word for white. And then it says bianco, the Aravit abiad. So it gives the definitions in both Italian and Arabic. And Italian is just standard 15th century Italian, or the Hebrew word matai, when. The gloss is quando, uh, uva aravit, mata. So from a linguistic point of view, the texts I've shown so far have very little to offer. The, the, the contents are interesting sometimes, um, but the, the language, the Italian part, has no special features other than the use of the Hebrew alphabet and the occasional uh, mixing in of Hebrew words. A second uh, group of Judeo-Italian texts is kind of a, a miscellaneous category representing local dialects from all around Italy, especially um, the south of Italy, also from Sicily and the island of Corfu. And um, these texts, uh, which includes poems and glossaries and some prayers and translations of some Hebrew texts, um, don't reflect any kind of standardized Jewish language, uh, not even necessarily any Jewish language, it's, it's just probably just a local dialect, but written down in Hebrew characters. And uh, one of the most important texts in this second category um, is an original composition, an elegy written for Tisha B'Av. Um, it survives in two manuscripts, one which is vocalized, you see here, this is part of the famous Valmadana collection, which is a private collection that was sold about five years ago. And this particular manuscript is now uh, in private hands. And then another version of the same text is known from an unvocalized manuscript that's now in the library in Parma. Um, and I've put here on the left of the slide just a few uh, lines. You, you can see what the language looks like. It's not standard Italian. It's, it's some local Southern dialect, uh, but it's not clear it was a Jewish dialect, but it was written down uh, in um, Hebrew characters. Another uh, dialectal text uh, is um, a very famous manuscript, what's known as Mishnah Parma A. It's actually the oldest complete copy of the Mishnah, so it's really important for the study of the Mishnah. Um, it was copied in 1072 in uh, Otranto, which you see on the map here is in the very, very far uh, south of, of the heel of Italy. And um, what's interesting for our purposes is that um, the scribe, or a scribe put in the margins about 150 uh, Judeo-Italian glosses. And the uh, glosses are in the dialect of that region called the Salentino dialect. It's actually also the oldest record of that dialect, Jewish or Christian. And I've put here on the slide just one example of a gloss. So the Hebrew word malpifon um, was glossed as meluni rutundi, something like round melons modern Hebrew, blafafon, cucumber. So we get a, a variety of these sort of local dialectal texts, which are not necessarily reflecting a Jewish dialect, but they are written down in um, Hebrew characters. And there's a third category of Judeo-Italian texts, which I think are the most interesting. And these are texts that were composed in a unique Jewish dialect. Um, this corpus includes complete translations of about a half dozen uh, Sidurim prayer books, uh, translation of the latter prophets of the Bible, uh, some other biblical books, the Song of Songs, a handful of Psalms and, and uh, other excerpts from the Bible, and some other smaller texts. And the language of this third category seems to have been some sort of literary dialect that was popular among Jews for about a century or two in the 15th and 16th centuries. And this dialect shares most of its features with the, with the dialect of Rome, uh, with some other features that were uh, typical of, of other Southern Italian dialects, but it was still uniquely Jewish uh, uh, generally. 
And even though the dialect looks Southern Italian, the texts in this dialect mostly came from the Northern half of Italy, um, where the dialects looked very different. And in this corpus, I said that, that there were a bunch of, uh, of Sidorim. One interesting fact is that um, most of these Sidorim were made for women. We know they were, uh, there are Kalfans, I'll show you in a second, that tell us they were made explicitly for women to read or to use. For example, here is a page of one Sidor that was copied in 1483. Um, it has the Shema prayer. You can see on the right, the, the, the Shema itself written in Hebrew, but the rest of the page is written in Judeo-Italian. And there's a colophon at the end of this manuscript that says uh, it was the scribe completed this manuscript here in, it says in Hebrew, uh, Har Albodo or Monte Albodo in Italian um, for uh, Lady Rebecca. Um, and this town is now called Ostra and it's in the uh, east of Italy in the Le Marche region. Another Sidor dated 1484. Um, you see here the page that has the Hebrew prayer Nishmat Kol Chai, which is translated as Lanima de One Vivo in Judeo Italian. And this one has a colophon that tells us it was written for the lovely and learned Gentile of Miniato which is a town in Tuscany, about 50 kilometers west of Florence. And you see here where that town is. A third Sidor that you see here, um, this has the Shema again, but this time uh, with no Hebrew, it just has it in the translation, in Tene Israel, Hero Israel. This uh, was made in 1499. And the Colophon tells us it was made by a scribe named David in the town of Cento, which is north of Bologna in the Emilia Romagna region uh, for the glorious Madonna Bona, Lady Bona. And I'm telling you um, where these come from because the three regions I mentioned, Le Marche, Tuscany, and Emilia Romagna have very different local dialects, um, different from each other, different from the dialect of Rome, and yet in each case, the language of these prayer books is this literary Jewish dialect that uh, is similar to the dialect that was spoken in Rome and not similar to the dialects of those regions from which the, the manuscripts came. Um, we even have printed versions. Oh, there's uh, Cento. We even have printed versions of the Judeo-Italian prayer books. Three uh, different editions were published um, the first one in Fano in 1505. Fano is in Le Marche on the uh, Adriatic coast. And here you see um, on this page uh, the uh, line that begins in Hebrew, Bachar Tabanu, you have chosen us, or in the Judeo Italian, tu shaliesti noi. Another edition was published in 1561 in Mantua in the north. And here we see the Shema again uh, in Judeo Italian, Enteni Yisrael. Notice also at the very top of the page, the page number is in Judeo Italian. It says 27, 20, page 27. Uh, if you notice, um, if you can read Hebrew, for, for whatever reason, in uh, many, if not most, Judeo Italian texts, they used the Hebrew vowel schwa for the vowel e. They didn't like to use sere, uh, and they almost never used the vowel segol. So the schwa uh, does double duty for the, the uh, schwa and for the e vowel of Italian. So here it's enteni for the imperative shema here. Uh, and that came from Mantua. Now, besides all these prayer books, uh, which are the, the biggest source of this dialect of Judeo-Italian, we also have a uh, near complete translation of the Letter of Prophets that was copied in the 16th century. And it's now in the library in Parma, which has, uh, I think, one of the biggest collections of Hebrew manuscripts in the world. And this is a, the first page of the book of Ezekiel. 
and I've transcribed on the slide the uh, the heading of this page, just so you can see what the language looks like. Uh, Cumencia lu libero, the, the book begins. Um, I'm sure over the course of the last 10 lectures in the series, you've discussed and other speakers have discussed what makes a language a Jewish language. So I want to talk about what makes this type of Judeo-Italian a Jewish language. My criteria may not exactly match what you have learned or what others have said, um, but to my mind, uh, to, a Jewish language has to have one of four features, um, ideally more than one. The first is that um, is the use of the Hebrew alphabet for writing, and we've seen already uh, lots of examples of um, Judeo-Italian written in the Hebrew alphabet. Um, the second is the incorporation of Hebrew elements, especially Hebrew vocabulary items. Um, we saw in the slides that had the um, Hanukkah song and the Purim song, the mixing in of some Hebrew words in those texts. We see also Hebrew elements in this literary variety of Judeo-Italian. Um, for example, here uh, is an excerpt from one of the printed uh, prayer books from 1561 two lines taken from the Avino Malkenu prayer. And in the first line, we see the words uh, shtar and chovot, lo shtar deli chovot, with two Hebrew nouns borrowed just as is. But in the second line, um, we have a verb, machla, which is based on the Hebrew verb machal, limchol, to pardon. But here we have an Italianized version. We have what looks like an Italian imperative form from a verb machlare, to forgive. Um, so it's not just a borrowed word, but a verb that's been incorporated into the, uh, the grammar of Italian. Another characteristic of Jewish languages is the uh, incorporation of loan words from other languages that Jews encountered in earlier generations often from earlier uh, migrations. And here, again, is a, this, the, a page with the Shema from one of the um, manuscripts, Sidurim. And in this uh, highlighted section here, which is Deuteronomy uh, chapter 6, verse 7, we see uh, the phrase, a meldare essi, translating in the Hebrew, vishinantam, you will teach them or you will recite them. And this verb that's used um, to translate uh, the Hebrew uh, shinantam is meldare, uh, or in some other texts, meltare with a T. That means to study or to read Hebrew or to, to recite Hebrew. And this word comes from Greek, ultimately. Um, Greek verb meaning, meaning to study or to practice or read. But the same word is found in Ladino, meldar. It's the usual word for to read in Ladino. It's found in Judeo-Provençal. And it's also found in uh, many or most of the modern spoken in Judeo-Italian dialects. So probably this verb goes back to some kind of common Judeo-Romance language and later uh, entered Judeo-Spanish um, and Provençal and Italian. Um, so it's a remnant of an earlier period uh, when Jews were speaking Greek that we see in this literary Judeo-Italian variety. And the fourth feature um, that I see of Jewish languages is that they usually have um, distinctive features of phonology, that is pronunciation, and of grammar, and of uh, vocabulary. And this literary variety of Judeo-Italian uh, includes all four of these features. So in terms of pronunciation, and the next few slides are very busy, and, and I know this is being recorded, so you can go back and, and pause the slides. I'm not going to go through every detail on each slide. Um, for example, a, a distinctive feature of the phonology of this dialect of Judeo-Italian is that it retains the letter L following certain consonants, where in standard Italian, uh, it became a Y sound. So, for example, we have the word plu for more, where Italian has pew, or blanchi white, 
where Italian has Bianchi. So it's more archaic in its phonology in this regard. Um, but it's more advanced in its phonology in the second uh, example on the slide, where, where Italian has the cluster ND, this dialect has just N, possibly a, a geminate N. So we find where Italian has grande, big, we see in Judeo-Italian grande, or uh, where Italian has comando, I command, we see in this dialect comando with no D. Um, another example, looking now at the bottom of this next slide, uh, where we have the cluster MP in a word like tempo um, or uh, sempre, we get NP in Judeo-Italian, tempo, sempre, campo, field. We get uh, various other changes. So, for example, we get uh, an inserted vowel in a word like libero, book, where Italian has libro, or supera, where Italian has sopra, quartero, where Italian has quattro. Um, at the bottom of the slide, you see an example of metathesis. So the word for stone is preta, with the, uh, the R and the E reversed. Italian has pietra, and other southern dialects uh, um, have the same word, preta, like in Naples, for example. We also get differences in grammar uh, in this literary dialect. Uh, so, for example, the masculine singular definite article, the, is either lo or lu, where Italian has il. So we get il cuore in Italian, in Judeo-Italian, lo core, or for um, brother, Lu frato, the brother, with a, not only the, the special word for the, but also a dialectal word for brother. Italian has il fratello, or lu plumbo, the lead, which has the article lu and the retention of l and the change of mb to nb. Lu plumbo versus Italian il piombo. In Italian, uh, in the plural, there are two words for the, masculine e and feminine le and the noun uh, also has different endings for masculine and feminine plural but in judeo-italian we see only one plural article and one plural suffix so we have li lustri the lights compared to italian e lustri in a feminine uh, word like uh, doors li porti the doors compared to italian le porte There's a tendency in this dialect to make all masculine nouns end in O and feminine nouns end in A. So in Italian, there are nouns that end in uh, the letter E, like nome, name. And we find sometimes uh, this is kind of made more masculine by adding an O. So lo nomo, or uh, the word for big. We saw grande a minute ago, but we also get grano, or king, Italian re. We get reo. Pane, bread, we get Judeo Italian, pano. So we get this uh, sort of regularizing of masculine nouns in O sometimes. So lots of differences in the uh, nominal morphology of this dialect. Also in the verbal morphology and the conjugation of verbs, we get lots of differences. So, for example, uh, uh, the verb, uh, the verbs fare and dare, which are kind of irregular verbs. Italian has the third person singular fa, he does, but we get in Judeo Italian fao, he does, dao, he gives, compared to Italian da, or daio, I give, where Italian has just do. Um, in the formation of the past and future tenses, we get differences. So, for example, uh, where uh, looking at the bottom here of the slide, Italian has chiamo, he called we find Judeo-Italian clamavo, where Italian has batte, it beat, where he beat. We get battevo with a different past tense marker. Um, here we see examples of uh, the same thing with a different person, the second person, plural past tense, a very different looking verb ending, or a different imperative suffix at the bottom of the slide here. So where Italian has Amate as a command, love, plural, we find in these texts, amiti, 
or where Italian has andate, go, imperative plural, we find iti. Different future tense suffix, so where Italian has faro, I will make, we get here in our text faraio with a, a very different first person suffix. Um, and you can go back at your leisure and look at these slides more carefully. So looking now more systematically at a verb, we see um, on the left side here of the first um, table, Judeo-Italian conjugation of the verb to call in the past tense. And you see four of the six forms are different than standard Italian forms. And in the future tense, two of the six are different. So quite a lot of differences in the conjugation of verbs in um, Judeo-Italian as compared to standard Italian. And with this irregular verb dare to give, I think almost every form is different than what we find in standard Italian. So the grammar is quite different from standard Italian in this literary Judeo-Italian dialect. Now, when it comes to verbs, we have, we're very lucky because there actually is um, an entire uh, manuscript of about 10 pages that's, that's um, in the Vatican Library, which has, um, it's actually a, translation of a Hebrew grammatical treatise that, that deals with verbs. And so we get um, the conjugation of uh, Judeo-Italian verbs um, listed out for us in this manuscript. So we have uh, a lot of information about the verb system of this dialect of Judeo-Italian. Um, in terms of vocabulary, we also get unique features in this, not just dialectal features, but also uh, unique words we find nowhere else. And the most striking example is um, shown here in this slide. The word for Lord is domedet or domeded, and the word for God is det. And these two words um, are attested uh, nowhere else, not in the modern spoken uh, varieties of Judeo-Italian, not in other Jewish languages. So you see here some examples. So translating uh, Baruch Atarunai on the top left here is Benedetto si tu domedet. Domedet is Adonai. Or in the Shema prayer here, uh, Enteni Israel domedet det Adonai Eloheinu domedet det nostro, that the Lord is our God. Or on the right here, det deli dei, the God of gods. And the bottom right, Lu Det de Israel, the God of Israel. And these two words um, have a, an unclear etymology. Um, some think that the word domedet comes from Latin dominus deus, meaning Lord God. Others think it comes from an old French word damedis, meaning literally dame of God, but more broadly divine wisdom as a, as a personified character. Um, and there are other ideas that we have. No one knows for sure where these two words come from, and they're unique to this one corpus of um, literary Judeo-Italian texts. Um, sometimes uh, the words that we find in this dialect uh, are interesting from the point of view of uh, the history of the Italian lexicon, because they they we find words that we don't find anywhere else uh, in uh, other varieties of Italian, and sometimes they make uh, important contributions to the, the history of the Italian lexicon. My favorite example uh, comes from this text here. This is a 14th century uh, manuscript. It's a glossary of um, difficult Hebrew words in Maimonides' Mishneh Torah, and here in the center of the slide uh, is the, the word uh, charara, which is a kind of uh, like a cake or a loaf, some kind of, some kind of baked uh, dough. And the gloss that was chosen for this word in the 14th century was pizza, peyod sari alaf, pizza. Um, the first attestation of the word pizza in an Italian text, that is in a, in a, a Christian Italian texts, comes from the mid 1500s. So we have here uh, the earliest known example in Italian of the word pizza, uh, and it's from a Jewish text. 200 years before, it's attested in a Christian text. It's actually attested in another text, probably that predates the Christian text, 
Um, in the translation of the prophets, we see this word uh, used in the translation of Hosea 7, 8, Ephraim haya uga, Ephraim is a cake, and in the translation Ephraim fu pizza, notice they used patach, not um, comets, and then in Ezekiel 4, 12, again, for uga, ugat orim, a barley cake, is translated pizza de orzi. So pizza is attested first in a Jewish text. I don't think Jews invented pizza, but they wrote it down first. Um, okay. I want to now go back to um, the other major type of Judeo-Italian, that is the spoken dialects that are known uh, almost exclusively from the 19th and 20th centuries. And again, there was not one type of spoken Judeo-Italian, but many types, depending on where uh, Jews lived, so the dialects, a dialect of Rome or Florence, et cetera. Um, and if we go back to that list of criteria that defines a Jewish language, right, these are not written down in the Hebrew alphabet, so they don't uh, uh, meet that criteria, criterion, but uh, they meet the rest uh, so we find in the spoken dialects incorporation of Hebrew words, especially um, Hebrew elements, especially Hebrew vocabulary items. Um, as you would expect, uh, as in every Jewish language, um, we find words connected to Jewish life, Jewish religious life and cultural life. Um, so a word like sabbat for Sabbath, tefillah, prayer, bracha, kasher, moel. And the first word here for Sabbath, I've given a bunch of uh, variants because uh, in each of the different types of Judeo-Italian, that is the, the variety of Rome, of Florence, of Venice, of Turin, wherever, they had different different um, uh, versions of this word. So in some cities, it was Shabbat day, it was or Sabbat, or Sabbat, or Shabbat, or Shabbat, or Sabbat. But for simplification, I don't, I don't give you every variety uh, for every word here, uh, it'll be too much, but I'll just give chosen one uh, one version of the borrowed word, but all Jewish Italian varieties have these sort of Jewish words borrowed. We also get um, other nouns borrowed that aren't necessarily Jewish in meaning, so words like ganav, thief, uh, is used in, I think, all spoken varieties of Judeo-Italian, or chokhmah, wisdom, or hovod, debts. Gibor or Gibore, strong man. We also get uh, adjectives, either borrowed or used as the basis for a new creation. So uh, we find in different dialects, gadol, big, shomen, fat. Um, we find the word malmazal or malmazallo, meaning unlucky, a combination of the Italian prefix mal, bad, with Hebrew mazal. Or in other dialects, smazalato, with the Italian prefix uh, s, which is a, a negating prefix, plus mazal, plus the Italian suffix ato. So we get uh, adjectives based on Hebrew borrowings. We get uh, an awful lot of Hebrew verbs borrowed. So we get uh, achlare, from Hebrew achal, to eat, daberare, or dabrare, to speak. Um, ganaviare to steal, uh, ainare or nyainare um, to look at. Um, in some cities in Italy, uh, Jews pronounce the letter ein as a ny. Uh, sometimes it's also as a ng, like an ng sound. So the the verb is in some places nyainare. Um, we also get, uh, I think. Uh, most interestingly, we get um, borrowed words that have taken on new meanings in dialects. So, for example, the Hebrew word makom, which means place, was used as a euphemism for toilet in some dialects. Um, tafus, uh, meaning in Hebrew captured, is kind of Jewish slang for prison. Dois, which has... Uh, a bunch of different variants, doish or doishe. Um, it was used for uh, Jesus. Um, this comes from the medieval Hebrew phrase, otoish, 
meaning that man, which also was used in medieval Hebrew texts to refer to Jesus in a usually in a negative way. Um, garon, which means throat in Hebrew, was used like, you know, what a voice, like if, to refer to someone's singing voice or speaking voice. Um, Hamisido is a slap or a punch from the Hebrew uh, word hamishito, meaning his fifth. It comes from the Bible in Leviticus chapter 5 um, regarding um, uh, like payback or, you know, uh, for a sin or something. Um, slang for police was your bed or your bed day. I don't know the story here, but uh, for some reason, the letter, the number 12, which in Hebrew it can be written yod bet, was connected with the police, something to do with their uniforms or the number they wore uh, or something. And so yod bed from Hebrew, yod bet means the police. Um, the exclamation bahalom means no way, not a chance from Hebrew bahalom in a dream. So there's a really a huge uh, amount of uh, Hebrew in the various dialects of um, Italy. Um, and uh, there's actually a new, there are several dictionaries, there's actually a new uh, dictionary just came out this year uh, of the Hebrew elements in Judeo Italian. I think it's 400 pages. So it was quite extensive, the Hebrew influence on the dialects of Judeo Italian, excuse me. Um, we also find in the spoken dialects uh, words from other uh, sources, other words encountered during uh, migrations or from other waves of immigrant of immigrants um, uh, into Italy. So, for example, in I think every spoken dialect, uh, Jewish dialect of Italy, we find the word negro or sometimes nero uh, using the uh, Italianized uh, version of it, and it's a uh, common. Uh, pejorative meaning something like miserable or ugly or good for nothing and it comes from ladino where the word negro means the same thing means bad or or miserable or, or good for nothing um ultimately from spanish negro meaning black nothing to do with race here this is like you know uh, a black cloud that kind of meaning um but this this word entered uh, Italy when the Jews were expelled from Spain and they brought with them their uh, Spanish dialects which became Ladino and uh, that immigrant community uh, gave this word to the Jews of Italy and it's attested in every Jewish Italian dialect. Um, in the north of Italy, um, a lot of the north of Italy was uh, for centuries under the control of the Holy Roman Empire or of Austria-Hungary, that is German-speaking um, uh, countries and so uh, Venice and other northern towns had a lot of uh, German Jewish immigrants and they brought with them Yiddish. So we find some Yiddish words in Judeo Italian. Uh, the word orsai or yortsai is, I think, in every uh, Jewish Italian dialect from Yiddish yortsai, uh, an anniversary of a death. Other Yiddish words also uh, were borrowed. I mentioned already the word meldare or meltare, which uh, is a, an ancient. Uh, Jewish romance word that survives in modern Jewish Italian dialects, which came ultimately from Greek. So not just um, words from Hebrew, but words also from other, other Jewish languages uh, entered into Judeo-Italian. Um, we also find in the spoken dialects, um, as with um, uh, the literary dialect, uh, unique features of um, pronunciation and grammar and vocabulary. So for example, in the dialects of Rome, the masculine singular definite article the was either o or lo. And the local Roman dialect, that's the Christian Roman dialect, uh, has the article er, er, where extended Italian has il. So Jewish Roman is different from both the local Christian dialect and standard written Italian. In the plural, Jewish Roman has just one article for the, li, with no gender, whereas the local Christian Roman dialect has plural masculine li and feminine le, uh, similar to the uh, standard language. If we look at a verb in the Jewish dialect of Mantua in the north, 
we see that uh, Jewish Manchuan looks uh, pretty different from the local dialect. And the local dialect has these uh, what are called clitic pronouns uh, between the, the subject and the verb. So we have mi apasi. Jewish just has mi pasi with no uh, clitic pronoun. You see also that the some of the suffixes are different. So the u singular form, ti at pasi in Manchuan, but just ti paset with a different suffix in the Jewish dialect. Some of the pronouns are different. So we is nu altar in uh Christian Manchuan, but just new in Jewish Manchuan, different different vowel also. And both the local Manchuan dialect and the Jewish dialect differ uh, considerably from the uh, standard Italian conjugation of this verb. So um, the literary Jewish Italian dialect that we see in those Sidurim and the Bible translation of the prophets and a few other texts uh, meets all four of the criteria I mentioned, the spoken Jewish dialects meet three of the four that, that doesn't uh, meet the one uh, about uh, the Hebrew script. But these dialects are Jewish, uniquely Jewish in um, all the usual ways. Um, you may be wondering uh, the status of these spoken dialects today. And I don't have great info, um, but I can say generally that all of the dialects are either extinct or nearly extinct. Um, I know in Rome, or I think there are, I think, as last time I checked a few years ago, there were still some elderly speakers of the Jewish Roman dialect. Um, as far as I know, uh, places like Venice and um, uh, Turin uh, uh, and uh, Ferrara dialects are uh, are long gone, probably uh, fifty to hundred years uh, extinct. Um, but there is some uh, has been some interest in the last few decades in um, either preserving or at least uh, trying to uh, uh, preserve some of these dialects and. Um, uh, if you go on YouTube and you search for uh, this uh, this play called Porio Rizero, um, uh, I think I misspelled that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I think it's Riderio with an I-O. Um, the link is here. You'll see uh, a play that was um, put on in the 1980s uh, by the community in Rome. It's an hour and 45 minutes, I think, uh, all in this if you want to hear what the Roman dialect sounded like, you can watch this play. Um, but for the most part, the the uh, modern dialects are uh, are are gone. 